Hey, 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 welcome, welcome back, back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything. As long as we use logic and common sense. I thought we'd go over a few issues raised by various comments I've received. Today, what makes a logical argument good? There are a few steps to making a good logical argument. To start with, the argument needs to be valid. This means that the truth of the premises of the argument imply the truth of its conclusion. For example, look at the following valid argument. Premise 1. All men are mortal. Premise 2. Socrates is a man. Conclusion. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. The argument's logic is valid because if the premises are true, the conclusion must also be true with logical necessity. It would be a logical contradiction to agree with the premises, but not the conclusion. In fact, the structure of an argument can be valid even if the premises and conclusion are false, as long as the conclusion still follows from the premises. For instance, premise 1. Everything made of green cheese is squishy. Premise 2. The moon is made of green cheese. Conclusion. Therefore, the moon is squishy. As you can see, both premises and the conclusion are false, but the argument is still valid. By contrast, look at an invalid argument. Premise 1. All soccer balls are cubicle. Premise 2. My ball is a soccer ball. Conclusion. Therefore, my ball is round. This argument fails, not because the conclusion is wrong, but because it's not a valid argument. The conclusion doesn't follow from the premises. However, if we want an argument to work, it needs to be more than just valid. It also needs to be sound. An argument is sound when it's valid and also has true premises. For example, in the green cheese argument, both premises are clearly false, so even though the argument is valid, it's not sound. So once an argument is sound, it's a good argument, right? Well, not necessarily, because of something called an informal logical fallacy. This is when a logical fallacy is being committed, but not in the logical structure of the argument itself. Let me give you an example of one such fallacy so you understand what I mean. Premise 1. Either I own a computer or I'm made of wood. Premise 2. I'm not made of wood. Conclusion. Therefore, I own a computer. Now, this argument is sound. The premises are true, and the conclusion follows from the premises. However, this argument also commits the informal logical fallacy of begging the question, because the only reason we have to believe the first premise is that we already believe the conclusion. Because of this, we have here an argument which is valid and sound, but still isn't any good. In order to be a good argument, it also needs to be free from logical fallacies. So to sum it up, a good argument must have a conclusion which follows from its premises, making it valid, true premises, making it sound, and must be free of logical fallacies, making it good. Only at that point should a logical argument be considered a proof or be able to convince anybody. Next, was Hume right that we don't have enough evidence for miracles? That's, That's all, for, all now, for now, so, so keep, keep asking, asking questions, questions, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching.